who refuse to go to the doctor because I have normalized pain. Pain mm -hmm. is not normal. I do not want to be in pain, right? So many of us, we're, we're, you know, we're used to it or we, we, we trick our minds and our hearts and say, like, I have a high threshold. I know. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Ayana B TV. We are here with Zav, speaker, entrepreneur, and coach, and we are so excited to hear what he has to say about self-care. Welcome, Zav. Thank you for thank being you, here. You. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. I'm excited for this conversation. Yes, yes. So tell us, let's start at the beginnings of how did you come to be a speaker, an entrepreneur, and a coach? You know how they say that certain things you don't find, they find you? Yeah. I feel that that is the exact trajectory of, of my life. I think about, you know, growing up in church and just, you know, for 13th Sabbath or for Christmas or for Easter programs, just, you know, my, my family making me just speak. So that's from the from a very young age. I've always been a speaker, but you know, you don't realize these things like, oh, I've literally been groomed to to speak and to be in front of people until I'm I'm 25 and realizing, wait, I've always done this, right? So speaker, that's how speaking came to be about. Um, entrepreneurship is something that I've always wanted to do, even at a young age. I just didn't know the details. I didn't know how it would look. So um but I knew I was always going to be an entrepreneur. So I even went to graduate school. I got my master's. I thought I was going to be in the music industry, but God was like, eh, eh, eh. Um, and he, he redirected me into the education sector. But in that, um, I got to hone in on skills and, and gifts and talents to go into entrepreneurship and then coaching. I feel like a coach is just a mentor. I've been mentoring children since I was a child myself. And so, you know, for the past over 15 years, I've been a mentor as well. So a mentor, a coach, you know, I think they're quite synonymous. You're literally helping people get from point A to point B. So speaker, entrepreneur, coach, like that, that's me. Wow. Wow. I, I like how you say, you know, how something finds you. You don't necessarily go looking for it. Thanks. Wonderful. Wonderful. I would say the same. I, I would say the same about myself. I've been talking my whole entire life. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just recording it. <laughs> hey, that's, that's what I'm talking about. So we are talking about self-care. So tell us, Zav, how do, how do you define it, especially with all the things that you do? Uh, so self-care, I feel like self-care is, is not a suggestion. Self-care is a mandate. Um, you know, even as far as on like the spiritual level, I was just telling one of my mentees last night, um, he was like, wait, wait, you go to church on Saturday? And I was like, yeah, I do. And then I began to tell him about the Sabbath. And he was so intrigued at the fact of literally at the end of the week, I'm beat, I'm spent. And a part of my self-care is literally disconnecting from the world, from work, not the world like that, but work from work and from things that are all vying for my attention. It's like, yo, I get to chill with God. I get to vibe out. I, got, I get to date have a date with God date not on some weird I don't want y'all thinking like no but you literally what are you doing a date you're intentional about that time spent so even from you know observing the Sabbath from Friday night to Saturday Saturday sunset um you know that is part of my self-care because my mind isn't you know on this or on that it doesn't have to be um so self-care is definitely it should be a mandate in all of our lives even as a black man I think that certain times, you know, we're working hard to the bone. We got to get it. We're on the grind. You know, no sleep. Wake up. No sleep. Grind, grind, grind. It's just like, ah, bro. Like, I, my peace of mind is so much greater than that. So self-care can be anything that you do and that, that kind of brings you peace. So for me, you know, I like massages. Just saying. I, I like going to the massage every, every you know, couple of weeks or what have you. Mostly when I sleep bad and my shoulder and my back is, is feeling is feeling crazy. That's most times when I go, but that can be self-care. Some other things I do for self-care is going to the gym, right? Um, I, I need to I need to lose weight. So a part of my self-care, right? Because it, it's two-sided. A part of my self-care is also knowing like because I care for myself, 
I'm going to do these things that my future self will be grateful for. So, you know, that's, that's a goal for this year to get in the gym because I got to lose this gut. Um, and then I also think that self-care is going to look different based on who you are. Um, and I want to encourage someone who's watching this right now. If your self-care journey doesn't look like someone else's, that's perfectly fine. You know, Ayana, your self-care might be, I'm going to get dressed up and go to a really nice restaurant and eat by myself without the distraction of family members, of, of friends, of my coworkers. That might be your self-care. But my self-care might be going to the mall. Like I'm about to, I'm about to blow a bag. I'm about to, you know, get some things, something that I like, something that brings me joy. So I think that joy comes from Christ. I just thought about that. Joy should always come from Christ. Let him, let him lead us, but do something that, that brings you joy. Wow, 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 you are right. I'm glad that you mentioned that one person's self-care looks and is going to look a little different than someone else's because mm -hmm. we're all different. We may all like massages, but you know, maybe someone likes the hot stone or maybe someone <laughs> therapy or maybe- Weed is, right, right. You're right, you know what I'm saying? It looks different. Mm -hmm. Some people have to have it every week. They need a massage every single week. Some people once a month, you're absolutely right. Some people hate massages and they wanna do something else. Right. So you're right, let's, let's encourage anyone who's listening right now Please don't compare yourself to anybody Please. else's because it oh, needs to look different because every self is different. I know that grammar is not exactly correct. <laughs> every self is different. Every person is unique. So make it make it work for you. Absolutely. So tell me a few other ways you're, you are being intentional uh, about taking care of yourself during this time. So some people say we're at the end of the pandemic. Some people say we're in the middle. Whatever your, uh, you know, beliefs are, we're certainly in a different time than we were before uh, 2020. So Absolutely. how are you being intentional? What intentional? Has anything changed for you uh, since 2020? Yeah, no, I, I definitely think a, a lot of stuff has changed. Um, so, you know, not to get too political, but everything is political, as um, Dr. Voice Watkins says. Um, or is that Tom Joyner or one of those black pioneer icon says everything's political from flushing the toilet to marching with a picket sign. But um, since 2022, since 2020 has started, um, I think we are currently still in the pandemic, although like you look outside and you can't tell um, because people are still getting sick. But I would definitely have to say I am doing the things that they kind of aren't telling us to do which is it, it, because we're in this pandemic because we have a global infection, right? And some of the things they aren't telling us to do are to get sunlight, mm -hmm. get adequate sleep, get active, um, use your supplements. Um, and supplements could even be the natural homemade homeopathic um, remedies such as ginger. I just read up on ginger last night and I was like, wow, I did not know it had, I know our Caribbean people, y'all know about the benefits. <laughs> Listen, ginger, turmeric, just all of those great things, um, garlic, right? So since 2020 has started, I've been super intentional um, about like, just getting sunlight because I'm like, wait, we need that vitamin D, right? I've been intentional about, you know, incorporating um, sea moss and, and things of those sorts. I never really thought, of, people were talking about it, but I never really thought about it beforehand. And I've also been super intentional about the the time that I have with people, right? All of us have experienced loss, right? Um, and in that same breath, in that in that same vein, with since twenty twenty has started, it's like realizing life is short. Life is short. You have to incorporate self care. Those jobs that you are, with all due respect, a slave to, right? And when I mean a slave, I don't I don't mean that to be flippant. I mean it to be like you know you're anything they want you're there and it's just like they have no respect to boundaries they're not increasing your pay they're not doing any of those things but yet they want you at their beck and call and god forbid you croak tomorrow before you see this coat they're gonna have somebody else life is short that's what 2020 has you know has taught me life is short it's in, it's important to make sure that you are living for christ right when you don't know the day or the hour living for 
for Christ, but on the on the other side of that, just making sure that you are practicing these self care, you are doing doing the things that that bring you joy, you are doing the things that maybe like popular culture is insane to do. Um, going for a walk, spending time with your family, but being intentional. I bring up that word. That's one of my favorite words. Just being intentional about it all, because life has literally there isn't anybody who is still on this planet right now that is older than two years old, that your life has not changed. It's no one. Whether it's, you know, something minute such as masks or whether it is, you know, losing a, a pivotal part of your family. Everybody's life has changed. So, you know, I wasn't doing a lot of things like being intentional about my time and, you know, um, getting sunlight. I was like, man, get sun, whatever. But no, um, those things are necessary and vital to, to me right now. That sounds amazing. The sunlight, I, I agree with you. At, at the beginning of all of this, um, I was trying to make sure I was outside a lot and walking yeah. a lot. And I wasn't really doing that before. I wasn't really thinking about that. So I want you to tell me when you have a really busy week, how do you make sure you get your sunlight in? How do you make sure you're reading up on maybe learning about some more um, supplements or vitamins or whatever it is you're looking at? How do you make sure you get that in in a really busy week? Whoa, I love that question because I'm all about practicality, just being practical because all of us are incredibly busy. Um, I try to I try not to use the word busy because Dr. Jamie Callisar, I remember we were in um, at HEB camp and he said being under Satan's yoke. So I'm like, no, 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 I just have a lot of stuff going on. I'm not busy. I'm not, I'm not busy. I'm not busy. <laughs> you can't yeah. just throw that out there like that. Wait a minute. I <laughs> Listen, I, okay. I always think like we have a lot we'll of talk stuff about that over. later, I guess. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, that has always stuck with me. Oh. And um, and so when I have weeks that seem to be overwhelming, when I have weeks that whether it's you know after work events or just regular life events, um I'm not gonna lie, I get a lot of information from Instagram because there is a lot of knowledge on there, and we're on our phones anyway, right? So I do get a lot of, I get to read up from there, but I, I, I'm a firm believer that we make time for the things that we want. And, and that's not in like a cliche term. Like we hear that all the time. It's just like, no, oh, literally think about your life. Something for me that I prioritize. I know I'm, I know I'm a 34 year old man, but I prioritize naps. So if I want to take a nap, listen, if I want to take a nap, I am going to take a nap. And so, you know, you just incorporate it where you can. And I, I think that being balanced is a falsity, if you will, because there are going to be different things, times in our life where one thing is vying for our attention a little bit more. There's something else. And that's cool. I think that's the ebbs and flows of, of life. But I, I definitely, to your, to your question, I definitely incorporate, um, I definitely incorporate, you know, learning and growing um, when I can. What if it's just Instagram? Okay, cool. I want to know something. I'm getting on Google, right? Um, it's crazy to have Google. Anything one knows me, just Google it. It's a noun right now. Um, and then just making sure that I make that time for, for that learning, for that self-care um, and whatnot. So. Okay. Wow. Naps. Yeah. I, I wish I could take them. I do, but I'm glad that you can. And, and when people tell me that, I'm just like, wait, what? I'm like, I don't understand. You guys are like mutants or something. If you can't take a nap, I just like I'll go to sleep right now. <laughs> Listen, maybe that's something I need to add this year. Figure out how to take a nap in the middle of the day. This year, <laughs> but I need this to year. take one, maybe so. <laughs> so, getting the sunlight, taking the naps, doing the massages on a regular basis. How has this changed your life? Ooh, that's good. That's good. Um, because I am someone that that is an extrovert. I, I love being around people. Um, I, I feel like I'm always doing this and doing that. You know, a life of so, not all the time, but sometimes my weeks can be go 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 go. I think that I am. How that's changed my life is I've been able to just be a little bit introspective and realize, like, yo. I actually feel better. Yo, I actually like need to do this. Just being aware. Um, 
And why that's in, why why that is important is because we, you know, so many of us. I, I can only speak for myself, but so many of us um, don't take a step back and reflect. Like, how do I feel? Do I feel better? You know, taking a personal assessment. I, I was just a couple of weeks ago. I um, I went to like the urgent care because my stomach was hurting. And it was hurting for like three, four days straight. And I'm like, I'm not one of these stubborn old black men who refuse to go to the doctor because I have normalized pain. Pain is not normal. I do not want to be in pain, right? So many of us, we're, we're you know, we're used to it or we, we, we trick our minds and our hearts and say like, I have a high threshold. Like, no, go to the doctor if you're able to, you know, don't look on WebMD or Google your symptoms, like those things are problematic, but making sure that you take a personal assessment of just like, wait, how do I feel when I'm doing this? Has this actually impacted my life? Do I need to pivot? Do I need to take some other supplements? Because like, this, is, this isn't this is doing its job, right? Do I need to go from hand and stone massages to reflexology because I stand up on my feet all day and I need that intentional. So just being able to, being able to recognize and take a step back and, and doing that person assessment, whether it's weekly, monthly, quarterly, whatever the case may be, um, is super beneficial. Wow, wow. It sounds like you being intentional has really changed your perspective on your life and caused you to really focus on yourself even more to make sure you're in tune with yourself, you're on the right track, and like listening to pain. Thank you for saying that, you know, we don't need to normalize pain. That, okay. that makes it so clear, I think, to some of us who think, we should maybe suffer a little bit more than we should. Yeah. And, yeah. and we really don't need, we don't really need to do that, right? Because we can't be our best selves if right. we're in pain. So, wow, wow. You're just bringing all, all <laughs> wonderful statements and knowledge here. I love it. I love it. I love it. So I don't know about you, but when I am online and I'm looking for things, especially when I'm looking at things about self-care, um, I see a lot of things focused on women or geared towards with women. Now, I don't know if it's because I'm a woman and maybe my algorithm is doing that, but yeah. I don't see a lot of things geared towards men. So let me ask you a couple questions. Okay. On your algorithm, are you seeing things that are focused on men's care, men's health, men's introspection? Are, are you seeing a lot of that? Yeah, I, I am, I am, because I and following those things. Um, there's a page, I think it's called Express Yourself Black Men or, or Therapy for Black Men or something like that. And um, I follow those pages and I follow individuals who are thought leaders. Um, I don't follow all thought leaders because I'm like, eh, no, I don't really rock with that ideology. But um, I, I am, you know, and, and that's what I love about this generation. And, you know, social media, there are some damaging and, and bad stuff about it. But the other end of that spectrum is people like us, our minds are opened up because it's just like, wait, our parents weren't talking about this. When we were in high school, our friendship circles were not talking about this. So these 18 year olds have access to the same thing that we're seeing in our thirties and forties. And it's like, yo, yo, yo. So, you know, I feel like they're not behind the eight bubble. So yeah, I am seeing that on my page. Wonderful. So that just lets me know, I gotta change my algorithm up a little bit. <laughs> So since you're seeing all of this, can you give us two or three resources that you really like um, what they're giving, whether they're videos or um, quotes or books, whatever you see that's specifically geared towards men? Give us three resources that you really like. Okay. Yeah, I love, I love that. Um, so there's, this, there's a gentleman. Um, his name is Keir Gaines. Um, and he is someone, uh, and he was just proud of himself or just stated that he I got, got like 300 or 400,000 followers on, on Instagram. Um, and he speaks from just the mental health perspective in terms of um, like black men and family and like trauma and just like realizing that stuff is trauma, but like we don't know what trauma is. So, so we, those, those traumatic things in our lives. Um, there's this, there's this uh, other page on Instagram. I'm, I'm just going to stay on Instagram because all y'all watching are on Instagram. Um, there's this other page that um, it has the N-word in it. And every day, <laughs> every day, it is an affirmation with the N-word in it. But it has like a cult-like following 
because people resonate with this. So literally, um, and, and uh, uh, oh man, I think it's express yourself. Some I have to find it. I have to find it. But why? Oh, I I think, yeah, yeah, I have to find it because. Why that's so important is because, you know, let's let's not play the game of being culturally aware. Like, we have to be culturally aware and culturally relevant. I feel like younger and older people, uh, so people younger than me and a little bit older than me, um, repost his, his, his stuff or, or their stuff or whoever is over it. And it's just really great affirmations um, because we need to hear that. So I'll just give you an ex example of maybe three. So the ones that I've seen are... Um, you know, you deserve to be celebrated, my N-word. Um, it'll say, you know, something like, you need to love yourself, n -word. So every, every affirmation is just like, you know, politics aside, as far as whether you like the, the, the use of the word aside, but it's just like, it's given why I love it is because I'm really big on exposure. And why I love it is because it's affirming Black men who otherwise would not be affirmed, have not been affirmed, um, or, or just kind of like need to pick me up. So, you know, it's literally hundreds of thousands of people who follow that page. Um, and it's, it's, it, it's, it's, it's very powerful. And then last but not least, um, someone who I really think is really doing a, a great work in, a great work in, you know, in, in men's self-care, is someone named Cornelius Lindsay? Are you familiar with Evan Lindsay? Yes, yes. Um, yes, so her husband, her, yes. her husband, I like following his page because he is a believer and um, he is a believer and the stuff that he talks about is stuff, he is like, you know, some men aren't talking about suicide. They were literally within a four week time period for suicide. And he talked about his own journey and yeah, yeah, yeah. From celebrity sons to, to people, you know, just in the, most of them were in the entertainment world. But it was just like four, and it's like, hey, talking about his own bouts with that, um, and then the Christian perspective and mental hair, mental health, um, and, and and family. I'm I'm really big on family because I think that the black family is important and it needs to be revered and celebrated and protected at all costs. And so I love that you're you're showing these things in color, in action. So um, on Fridays, he and his wife and their children have like family date night or whatnot, where they expose their children to fine dining and, you know, the benefits of that and, and the image that is shown to their, their they, they go on dates on Fridays as well. So that imaging you're showing to your children, that like that trickle down, that generational, you know, what you see you will be is something that I believe in, I stand 10 toes down on. So those are just three, three pages, three individuals um, that I, that I follow for that, that are doing good with the, the self-care, you know, Cornelius Lindsay always talks about working out. He used to be a chubby kid. And it's like, yo, I, I, as a teenager had to retrain my mind and my body. And that's why I go so hard right now. All of those things, you know, make up the sum of the man. What are we thinking? How are we treating ourselves? What does our family look like? All those things matter and are important. Wow. Wow. Thank you for thank you for sharing that. Okay, I did not know. Um, I do know who Cornelius Lindsay is. Didn't know he was a chubby kid. So that's, huh? That's interesting. <laughs> so you have given us resources. You've told us about how you're intentional and your thoughts. What advice do you have specifically for men that are just starting their self care awareness, their self care journey? Oh man. <sighs> yeah, okay. I'm speaking to the fellas right now. Let me think. Let me think. All right. Fellas, it is a mandate that you take care of yourself. Taking care of yourself might look different to your to your wife or your girl or or to your children, but just make sure that you are intentional about it because if you want to be the best for your family, for your community, at work, at your church, wherever you are, you have to make sure you're including self-care. If you're just getting on the journey, do some research, Google, YouTube, Instagram. Those things are out there and they're powerful. So make sure you checking those resources out because you can see, okay, I want to try this. I want to adapt this. I want to include that. So definitely check those out. Wow. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, let's 
I'm going to ask you something else. You said uh-huh. you liked massages. Uh-huh. So there's some men who, you know, like them and there's some who <laughs> I don't know if they're going to like them, but they don't know. So exactly. if they wanted to try a massage, what would you suggest? Would you, are there shorter massages they can do? Is there a trial period they can take? So, so tell us what you would tell them. Oh my gosh. So it, it so where I live, um, they have a lot of reflexology places. So reflexology focuses on like the lower regions. So like your legs, your feet. Um, and for those of us who walk a lot, for those of us who work out a lot, for those of us who stand on our feet a lot, I think those are going to be something, a great place to start. And honestly, I like the reflexology sometimes better than the massage because you're, you're like laying down like this and they're rubbing your temple and they're playing with your ears um you know and they're and they're doing your feet or whatnot at the same time just massaging them in your legs and so I would definitely start with a short massage because you can go 30 minute you can go um, 20 minute 30 minute 60 minute and 90 minutes um typically um so go with a shorter one and just be open and just share and just share like where you are experiencing pain. So if your lower back is hurting, just let them know, you know, like, hey, my lower back is hurting. Can you focus on this area? Um, and if you have no area by God's grace that is hurting, you just you just maybe you're a little bit tense. You can just tell them that as well. So be open with your communication and just go for a little 20, 30 minute massage. Try it out. You might have to try different massage places as well. I like that. I like that. Okay, so great advice um, for men that are just starting and looking into something new, especially a massage or reflexology, like you say. So tell us, what are you going to add to your self-care routine this year? Oh, my gosh. Mm. Um, So what am I going to add to my self-care routine? Ooh, that's good. So I'm engaged. Um, hey, congratulations. <laughs> uh, I'm engaged and uh, my fiance currently lives in Florida. Um, so she, she's going to be moving to, to Texas with me. And, um, and so I, I'm definitely going to be incorporating date night because, you know, getting like something that is a part of my self-care is I like getting dressed up. I like, you know, when you, when you look good, you feel good, the whole bit. Yes. So um, just incorporating date night, I'm going to be adding that. And I think that's needed because planning weddings can be stressful. And I don't know why y'all didn't tell me weddings are stupid, dumb, expensive. Um, so I'm going to need as much like non-business talk as possible. Um, and, you know, grinding, but also enjoying the fruits of my labor and being present and, and, and knowing that we have to do what we love with whom we love right now. Um, I will also be adding going back to a therapist I've been thinking about it and I'm totally not against it um but I I, I'm definitely going to be adding that to the because I in the in 2020 I definitely saw a therapist because like looking at the four walls of your home while you're going to work in a pandemic you know that we that we've never experienced it was a lot so I'm going to be adding that And the third thing that I'm going to be adding to my my journey is um, being more aggressive with my workouts. Um, I have a friend who does martial arts. I like boxing. um, So I I know somebody that can teach me boxing. I I have to fit in my wedding tuxedo. Just just going to call it what it is. So I will be myself. My mental will not be right if I don't look good in my tuxedo. So part of that self-care is, is the future, right? Is preparing now. So um, just adding different workouts so that I can just get in shape and, and look my best self. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I want to thank you so much for being here, Zav. Uh, but before we go, we've got a few personal questions, not too personal. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> So just tell me what comes straight to your mind, okay? Oh my gosh, I'm ready. I'm All ready. right, here we go. What is your favorite comfort meal or comfort food? Not the healthy stuff, the stuff that's really not good for you, but you know, we eat it sometimes anyway. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Our favorite comfort food would definitely be like plant-based nachos or quesadillas. 
sandwiches or ice cream sandwich, vegan, of course. Ice cream sandwich, vegan ice cream sandwich? Listen, listen, when I tell you they are 100 calories. Oh. And there's eight in a box. Oh. And, you know, I may or may not have eaten them in a couple hours sitting. <laughs> previously. Um, so, and, and I, I didn't eat anything that whole day. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. You got to tell us what, what kind those are because <laughs> you got to tell us the brand. I mean, Listen, no, they're so delicious. They're 100 calories, each little thing. And they're just so good. I just, I was like, why is, why is ice cream, you know, so good? And, you know, I, I used to love ice cream before I, uh, but before I gave up dairy, um, but it just never made me feel good. So to be able to find like delicious ice cream that doesn't hurt my stomach is amazing. Oh, good, good. All right. So delicious. Okie dokie. So what's your favorite healthy meal? You can eat it every day, all the time, and it's really good for you. Uh, chicken salad. Vegan chicken. Y'all already know the vibes. Um, <laughs> Plant-based chicken, if you will. Okay. But yeah, salad. I love I love a good salad with a really good dressing and mm-hmm. some um, craisins and some red onions, carrots, and maybe some some walnuts. Oh, my gosh. Beef. That sounds really good, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so what show are you watching right now? Oh, Abbott Elementary. Abbott Elementary. I don't have cable, so I watch it on Hulu. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. A lot of people don't have cable. A lot of people don't have cable. Super antiquated, super expensive. Got my smart TV. It's all good. Yep, that's all you need. That's all you need. So what show could you show or movie could you watch over and over and over again? You know all the lines or you know all the jokes, you know all of it, but you every time it comes on or every time you see it on your Hulu, uh, rather, you gotta watch it. Um, a Different World, my favorite show, I love it. Uh, you see I'm rocking HBCUs. That's right, that's Power right. Unity, cross colors, throwback, you know, integration. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, Different World is definitely my favorite show. I've probably seen every episode and yep. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. So what is your go-to after a long, stressful day? You've come home. It's been challenging. What do you do? I am taking off my shoes. Mm -hmm. um, Probably my clothes. Put it on a robe. Land on my big, comfortable sofa. And I'm like scrolling on, on, on my phone. It could be like social media. It could be catching up the text. Um, it could be FaceTime and family. I'm just like, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna let life stress me out. So you gotta do some things to unwind. I'm big. I'm a big unwinder. Like it, before I go to bed, it's mm-hmm. like a thirty minute ordeal. Like I'm, I'm listening to something. Uh-huh. <laughs> Tell us more. Tell us more. I'm, I'm like listening. I'm listening to something. I'm getting the right music. You know, I'm brushing my teeth. You know, I'm flossing, um, I'm, I'm just like, you know, stretching out, I'm dropping my essential oils, you know, so I can open up the nasal, the nasal, all of the whole shebang. And, uh, you know, and, and yeah, yeah, taking my time. It's, taking it's, like, time. it's a whole ordeal, yeah. Let me ask you this. Okay. During your nighttime routine, is skincare part of that? <laughs> um, I, um, Unfortunately, I, am, I, 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 you know, I'm speaking positive thoughts. I have struggled with consistency during skincare, gotcha. um, but I, 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 I love supporting this black owned brand called Bevel. Um, mm-hmm. the, the founder was Tristan Walker and I've been a supporter and follower of him since 2013, 2014. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I use like Bevel face wash or another face wash for men. Um, I use the Bevel exfoliating thing you know make sure that's good you know you're not supposed to exfoliate my fiance taught me this you're not supposed to do it every night so I do it maybe every other night or every two nights and then I go back to the basics and get some natural shea butter from Ghana and I put it on my face to make sure I'm not ashy because I used to be really ashy all the time um I just played myself, but no, I just, <laughs> I used to be ashy. You know, my friends make fun of me, like, bro, you didn't put any, I'm just like, you can't really even see that. But um, so just making sure I put it like on my neck and on my face to make sure I'm good. So definitely shea butter, but that's about it. It's, it's not this 
this long um, thought out thing, it just kind of happens. And I think um, I wash my hair every two, one to two weeks. So that keeps the, the bumps off my face. So um, skincare, it is important, fellas. You know, I know y'all watch this. It is important. Ladies don't want to see no crusty, no crusty face. I'm just saying. <laughs> but um, but my, my routine is super basic. Shea butter, make sure I wash my face, exfoliate every other day. And um, I'm usually good money. Good, good. That sounds good. All righty, let's see. Hmm. Three people you would like to have dinner with and why. Oh, oh, oh wow. Okay. Um, wow. We don't Dead have to have together. It can be separate dinners if you want, but three people. Dead or alive? Dead or alive. Okay. The first one is Obama. Okay. Um, and I say that because I was watching a video, a, a video from when he was voting, and this black this black man was like, "Man, don't be talking to my wife or my girl or whatnot." Oh yes, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> so I watched that, and I was just like, "I was like, dudes be really tripping out here." Um, but for, from what I got from that, I'm really big on emotional intelligence, mm. and I love that Obama just seems very emotional intelligence, very like quick witted. Yeah. and very charismatic mm -hmm. um and that's something that i i try to as a as a man as a person as a believer i try to be someone i try to be i am someone that treats people with grace honor and dignity like those things matter to me they matter so much it doesn't matter who you are your status i'm gonna speak to you you know i mean you're not any better than me but guess what i'm not any better than you either so those things um really make a difference to me so you know obama was incredibly charismatic so definitely want to um Definitely will have dinner with him. Um, the next person I would want to have dinner with, ooh, um, Dr. Maya Angelou. She just, just, the life that she lived, and you know, it's, it's to God's grace and his glory and his keeping. The life that she lived, she should not have been as successful by societal standards as she was as brilliant as she was. She, no, she should not have been. Um, and then last but not least, I'm a big, I'm a big music guy. So I have to pick somebody from the music industry um, that I absolutely love. Um, yeah, I would say Usher. Yeah, I mean, Usher, that's my favorite R&B, male R&B artist. And um, I just think he's, he's a cool guy, man. 40 something and he's still like singing and dancing and making moves uh that's my favorite artist so definitely would go out to dinner with those three individuals and of course all of them make or have made more money than i so they will be paying of course and we will be eating vegan and it will be expensive um just throwing that out there it will be expensive we're going to the finest vegan restaurant but yeah those are the those are my three people all right, all right. I like that. That's an interesting. Uh, it's a little carbo mix. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like that. <laughs> so, last but certainly not least, what inspires you? What inspires you to be your best self? Ah, uh, so what inspires me to be my best self? Honestly, you know, with. Uh, the, the word of God says without a vision, the people perish. So I often think of like the future, like my future. I think about like my future children. I think about when my nieces and nephews get older. Um, and I, I definitely, you know, my godchildren, I definitely want them to say like, you know, my uncle or my father did this or, um, or paved the way so that I can, I can do this or that. Um, so that, that thought just like, it makes me excited. Um, it's also a little bit terrifying, right? Because it's, you know, uh, yeah, it's a little bit terrifying. Um, but, you know, that, that is definitely what inspired me. And then, and then people like you, my friends, my friends who are getting it, my friends who are unapologetic, my friends who um, are creating and are creators, despite not having a big name, but it's just like, yo, this is my art. This is something I love to do. This is something that I want to do. So my friends inspire me, um, people that I don't know inspire me. I'm just like, oh, all the odds are against you. Or maybe you had good odds against you and you still um, managed to do great things. Like, you know, all of our, it's a case by case basis, but 
those are the individuals and the, and the people that inspire me. Just my future, my family, my friends who I'm around. Um, and, and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are, those are the people that inspire me just thinking about the better future and how I can be a part of that. You know, I think that if you can um, just be a, the sun on somebody's, you know, rainy day, you, you have done more than you probably can even imagine. So. Wow. Wow. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much for being here, Zob. You have given us so many resources and just shared so much of yourself. So thank you for your time today. If someone wants to get in contact with you to be a speaker or a coach, where can they find you? Yes, so um, you can find me on um, on Instagram. Um, I am under there. You know, my my entrepreneur, my business page is the Plant Based Brother, um, B R O T H A, not brother, but brother. Um, so definitely check me out on Instagram um, for my business people. Connect with me on LinkedIn. You know, I I'm really big in in education and and speaking and you know i would love to come speak to wherever you are um so you know check me out on linkedin i'm under x and hand fields like a hand on a football field and field and you can connect with me on facebook as well zav handfield so um definitely connect with me tell me that you watched this episode tell me how amazing you thought it was um just saying and um yeah let's let's get connected all right. Well, once again, thank you for your time today, Zav. I know we have all learned a lot and I'm going to make sure and change my algorithm so I can see some stuff <laughs> <laughs> uh, for a minute because <laughs> you know that algorithm is pretty, pretty it's accurate. So. It's super accurate. <laughs> well, we want to thank you guys for being here at Ayana B TV and we will see you next time. See y'all. Peace.